So the destiny is leaning towards the light side. I really like this system, the destiny point thing. Like oh. it's just a fun little. It is very fun, especially when you feel like I just need like that little narrative push. Yep. All right, guys. So please arm yourselves with pens and shield yourselves with graph paper as we gather on the campfire of our collective imaginations. At this moment, the weight of the sun is lessened by the burden of their sudden riches as Nier and Theros re-enters the car. Behind them is Moe's garage, where they sold the scrap Atromex and met the sweep, swoop bike athletes Mira and Jeannie while their X-34 land speeder was being repaired. In front of them, Destiny has many hidden paths, with a few obvious ones. You alone know the location of the Astromech gang's hideout, the likely place the Duros pilots' prized land speeder is being kept. You have already sliced information from the Astromechs after you had beaten them in combat, and so you know not just where it is, but that there's an R1 droid with a flame projector protecting the inside. Additionally, you met Shiri Esbel, who has offered to let you join her in ruin delving for Jedi survivors. Besru has many hustles while you're in Zakar, and the one that's like walking around the, the town, that's kind of daily, but... Since returning, you've heard that he does, on occasion, have train shipments that need to be protected. And then finally, there is, as you see, the entire planet of Vesem, with an entire galaxy of possibilities. Where would you like to begin? Your map is down here, since you're in Zakar, and you can always just hop on your land speeder and get to your next destination. I think our plan was to head on out to uh, the droid situation. Yeah, I think that was what we were thinking about first. Um, though, real quick, uh, before we just jump out there, where was the droids? Like, I know we said we found out where they were, but like... So if we look at where the car is here, mm -hmm. they're in this mound here. Okay. Okay, so not... And then, like... By, like, scale-wise, where would you say Moe's is outside of Zakar? Somewhere around here. Okay. So this is not perfectly the scale because I didn't decide what's going to be, but yeah. the trip to Moe's was a couple of hours. So it'd be, like, a good day's drive, probably, to get out to that mound. Uh, maybe, like, like, four, five hours, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, that's right, we were walking to Moe's before, <laughs> that's right. Okay. All right. Um, well, did we? I know. I know we talked about potentially talking to Shiri again. Did we want? Do we want to address that first, and or do we want to just go deal with the droids? I say let's go deal with the droids because um, I feel like what we want to do with him, I want to make sure we're prepared. That's fair. Speaking of prepared, one of you is currently injured. Yes. So, I bought some stim packs. That's probably the cheapest way to do it. If your character went to a clinic, they probably would just, with the amount of injury you have, just hit you with the stim, stim pack yourself. The issue is that the next time you use a stim pack, it would heal you four instead of five. So, if you wanted to go today or wait 24 hours for the stim pack to fully refresh, that's the kind of like tactical things you might want to consider. Um, I think I'm okay for now. Um, because it's just like an action to use a stim pack, right? It is. It would be one action to pull a stim pack out, and a second action to administer it. Okay. Unless you have something like quick draw. In fact, you may have quick draw, and you can just put the stim pack like on your hip. Okay. Fair enough. Um, yeah, I think I'm good then, and I'll just use the stim pack if I need it. Um, real quick, um, can we go over what equipment Theros got? I'm open uh, to it. Yes, let me. Um, I'm actually adjusting that really quick, just be adding things and subtracting things. And did you get like an earpiece or anything for your comm link? Let me see if I did. Uh, I did. Okay. Um, do. Okay. 
So I got a um, concealment holster to have my blaster pistol in, my new one. Got a little wizard pouch, military module backpack frame with a hidden compartment where I store my lightsaber, as well as um, a, uh, you know, the actual storage. Got my comm link, a memory stick, an extra reload, a toolkit, slicer gear, utility belt, scanner goggles, restraining bolt, stim pack, and ration pack. Nice. Um, and uh, for my crush armor, um, I just took the regular crush armor and then I added something which gives me uh, one melee defense. Can you name that something? Uh, it is... Uh, low friction coating. It is a rarity five. Cost me seven hundred and fifty credits, and uh, has a hard point required of one. Boom! And that's all, all the hard points for it. Yep. So that's a, a an attachment, and then there there are ways to mod those. I don't think off the top of my head I remember how to buy modifiers, but it's just like a, it's a crafting check to add the modifiers. So we would just figure out the labor cost. I think one of you said that you had attachments, and you, or was that, that was you? That was me, and then I, um, I, you can disregard that. Gotcha. Yeah, for, for another time. Because yeah, we can figure it out, and you're asking me if there was something that you maybe had overstepped, and that's a, another direction you may have gone, but it doesn't matter. I you guys are going. I overstepped that. I was asking that. You guys have come to a cave. In front of the cave, that's not the scale, is a really good looking speeder. If you want to bring your miniatures over. What's the key to scale up again? Uh, it should be if you mouse over and hit plus. Uh, I might not have given you permissions to do that because it can make things wonky. And I'll, I can scale up though. To fit one of these squares. Oh, there it is. And then I would say, like, I would definitely want to, like, approach and get kind of a, like, scope it out from a distance first. Very reasonable. Why don't we roll perception? Um, let's see, do those binoculars give me anything? For that. You could use the binoculars as you're approaching, and so I think it's going to give you a boost. I'm not sure, though, so we could actually check. Uh, it says, remove setback imposed due to long range or poor sight. So it would allow you to do it from afar at no penalty. And then is there any difficulty to this perception check? Oh, this, this should be a one red and one purple. One difficulty, one challenge. Okay, and I actually do have to, I think, do the mechanics because I did put an attachment onto my um, pistol. I got one success, one threat. So the the attachment doesn't cost it. It's, it's the mods on the attachment. That yeah, that's what I mean. Is I had one of those on there. So right. zero success, one advantage for me. Okay. Is there a way we can take those mods off for now? Yes, sir. Thank you. Alright, so with one of edge, you can do what you'd like to with that, which would include putting a boost into the pool. I'm just I'm putting aside this is our like our, our keep track of stuff for Destiny. Okay. You got a boost right there. And then for the success and one threat, I'm gonna give you one strain for succeeding. Your character has at least spotted the Astromech droid. Because of like the, the pilot light on the flame projector it's using. You see a glow within the caves here. You don't see it itself, but at least you see where it is. Okay. As, as you approach, this desert mound actually has a hidden cave within it. It has a surprising amount of moisture on the inside, despite being within this arid desert. As you see the, at the mouth, some of this moisture has dripped down and created vegetation in this otherwise sparsely populated area. You also see this Arlen Dempler CB7 Interceptor. It is a 
fancy looking. It's like kind of like the Corvette of land speeders. Hmm. Still seems a bit odd that they would just leave it out here like this. Just kind of seems like maybe they're trying attention, perhaps. You can know, imagine kind of that, that it wouldn't trip. fit inside. Ah. Not good planners. Hmm. Um, also, I have my, uh, my rifle, like, drawn. I have my pistol. Very reasonable. And yeah, it was your, you. You know, uh, you could have shared where the R one what is if you wanted to. Yeah, I I would point that out. And then you can consider how you'd like to approach. I mean, do we want to go in guns blazing? Pretend like we accidentally just found our way here. Well, um, I don't know if you'd be able to get behind the. The R1 and disable it. Don't think or I not without making that. a bunch of noise. I don't, like, with that, like, for the amount that I know about droids, is that even a possibility? Hello? No, oh, sorry, I, I was muted. Uh, I was saying... It w okay, sorry, can you ask the question again? Uh, it, would that even be possible to do? The, uh, well, what would that be? Haven't disabled the droid. Oh, yeah. The, you don't have an inhibitor bolt. You guys didn't buy one, which is the fastest way to just, like, kind of hack into or slice into a droid really quickly and disable it. But you, you could sneak up on it still. Okay. Um, do do. You're aware that it has a flame projector, which has a limited range? And do I know what that limited range is? We can just give it to you. Let's, let's look. It would be a short range. Short range. Okay. Um. Is there any, on like the ceiling of the cave, is there any like loose rocks or anything that possibly take advantage of it's not particularly loose here but you you could conceivably find one deeper inside with your your goggles your binoculars there are smaller ones at the at the like the base of it but the ceiling seems pretty stable um i mean other than you know potentially Sneaking up on that R1, I don't really see another choice. That's kind of uh, what I'm thinking. I don't want to sneak past it, because then if it finds out we're there, I don't want to get blasted on one end and fried on the other. Yep, exactly. Um, Alright, so... I guess I... Let's see here. And about... Is he... What, what distance is he? The R1. Uh, he... He is... Two short ranges away from you, kind of like a, a medium, not quite medium, maybe like four close ranges. Okay. Um. All right. I just say we just we just we just start blasting this. Okay, I'm going to move over this way and kind of ready my rifle pointing in that direction. Um, and just kind of, like, wait for Theros to start. <laughs> and then yeah, I'll follow and I'm going to kind of take a little bit of cover behind this, uh, this thing right here. And then I'm going to wait for it to come into view and then shoot it. It's it seems incredibly patient. Uh, you could try to shoot it to flush it out, but you guys were saying before how they're not very good planners. But it seems like it's in the perfect position to hit people with a flame projector as they approach, without being shot itself. Uh, are there any rocks or anything near me? We can say there's small rocks around the ground. 
All right, I'm going to take a handful of those. I'm going to try to toss them uh, over over here. You're, you're trying to get its attention. Yeah, I want to see if it'll go over there and check it out. We can do this as a ranged light to see how accurate you are. We can do it as a deception, because you're trying to make it like make the appropriate sound. Or we could do skullduggery, because it's still trickery. I think any of those against okay. one purple. One purple? All right. One purple. Uh, one difficulty. This is uh, it is an, an old, outdated R1 with very rudimentary programming. Yep. Zero successes, two advantages. So I will regain the strain that I took earlier. All right. So we sh we should have given you a boost for that. We you want to roll a boost dice and see, and that would get rid of this boost here. Okay. Hey guys, I need to take a quick break before we jump into this. Sorry. That's fine. Sweet. See, there you go. You got your success and your advantage. And so, I think now we can roll cool or vigilance for initiative. Because that's going to determine, like, it, you're going to see it coming out and how fast you are on the draw as far as shooting it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So your call, Cool or Vigilance, I will roll for him. Automatic advantage. So that's uh, two successes, three advantages for me. Nice. Go ahead, put yourself on the initiative. So one, two. He got three advantages. Ooh, he's being weird. Aren't advantages up? Uh, they are, my bad. And I'll roll for it. Three advantages tied. I'm going to put it below him. Because it's definitely slower than you guys. Yeah. Alright, so at the top, it, outside of combat, it moved out of cover. Uh-huh. It, it, it shot one flame projector at it, and then it is advancing. And okay. now, we've begun. I assume it's going to be you. Yes. So... And the difficulty would be two, correct? This would be two from this range. One failure, one advantage. I guess we can put a boost back in there. Just has to be for the next person. I guess I'm going to put stuff that oh, needs to be used immediately. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, never mind. Yeah. I'm going to go put the boosts that are just for the next turn on the left. And if we're doing longer term ones, the pool is going to be on the right. I think that's the way we're going okay. to do this. Um, were you doing something else? I see you did uh, it. Or. I, um, for my maneuver, I will sidestep. Alright, you use the sidestep maneuver. I believe that costs a strain. Uh, oh wait, never mind. Then I'm not going to use it. Sorry, I forgot about the strain. I do, I will eventually use that, but this time I won't, just because I already have cover. I could be mistaken, so like, if I say I really no, don't think take, so. No, it does take, it does take a strain. All right. You're right. Cool. Alright, so you're, you're ducking under cover. Yep. No, dude. And... Now I'm going to wait for him to return. It's going to flip yours. He's red for AFK. Waiting on that. Uh, you want to talk about your equipment? What, did you spend anything for your experience? Oh, uh, yeah. I, um, I took the sidestep skill, and then I also um, took a level into uh, light weapons. Nice. Yeah, that's, good. that's about to pay off. Yeah, I uh, yeah, I was like, yeah, you know, maybe I should have something uh, to shoot people with. Or at least a little bit since you guys are trying to lay low. Yeah. And then I also um, also got a little combat knife just to, this way I had something up close and far away. Yeah, versatile. I mean, it, it still uses brawn. 
but we do the melee skill instead. Yeah. After the Astromech Gang, what do you think, like, once you get through here, have you thought about what you consider doing next? I, th I think me and Harrison talked about um, taking What's-His-Face off to the, the runes, the Jedi rune things. Right, right, yeah. Win. Shiri, the Claudite bounty hunter. Yeah. I have the maps for that. I just figured like, I'd mentally prepare. I kind of had like a bunch of open things. Any feedback on the map? Uh, nope, it's good. Cool. I, I don't really have uh, too much negatives to say, I'll be honest. <laughs> I am going to redo it a little bit. These straight ones over here, those are supposed to be train tracks. Well, the, the other ones, like the more winding ones are straight. I think I need to change those color on the train tracks to make it train track here. Yeah, cool. As long I as you're, mean, you're sassy with it. I've never used campaign cartographer before, but it's, it seems to work. Yeah. And, oh yeah, it's a cryoport. It's Dustbrook. Imagine there's something over here. Yeah, well, now it's covered. Yeah. Bye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess as small talk, I can say that your character didn't really check out the interceptor, but you lack the code cylinder to turn it on. Like, the keys aren't in it. Oh, I'm sorry, can you say that one part? I was just reading a text from nope. Harrison really nope. quick. I was just saying that the you didn't try driving off with this land speeder, but it is missing the code cylinder, basically the keys to, to turn it on. Okay. Man, I have this speeder in Star Wars Galaxies. Nice. I know it's not actually the Interceptor, but I had trouble finding actual Interceptor art. Yeah. Is that like the the new personal servers of, or galaxies, or...? Oh, no, just back oh. in the day. Personally, I liked the new combat upgrade. Um... Yeah, I I realized um, later on in life that that was indeed a much better way of doing things. I couldn't say whether it was better or worse, but I had at least as much fun with both of those combats. I think it was it was faster paced and more definitely more action. Yeah. Just the way they, like, handled Jedi was also weird. Like, yeah. It was weird how they handled it in the original one. I think yeah. we, we, we know through experimentation that not everybody actually wants to play a Jedi. Yeah. I'd say sometimes whenever I play Star Wars-based things, very few people want to... Well, I'd say, I'd say very few. Very few compared to what you would expect want to play Jedi. Yeah, I'm surprised too. Like most people want to be like smugglers, pilots, or bounty hunters. Yeah. Me personally, Star Wars has always been Jedi or Sith or maybe a bounty hunter. I'm always playing a magic user in whatever game it is. So just it seems natural for me to be at least a force sensitive character in this game. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I I usually like the very uh, melee oriented characters, like the tanks. There's a there's a way to do that, I guess. Next thing you want to start talking about those mods. Uh, yeah. So, so... I don't know if, you, if if you just took it off, like you know, let's use the time productively. Okay. Yeah. So for my holdout blaster. Do -do. Where is it? Uh, or my light pistol, I should say. So, uh, light pistol, okay. I had the shortened you. barrel on. Um, with And then I put the innate uh, talent quick draw on it. So basically I can just pull it out without using, or as an incidental, I think it's called. Let me see. Yeah, an incidental. Which is basically a free action. Okay. 
Uh, All right, so that's one mod. Then let me look up weapon crafting, because that is going to tell me what it takes to mod the attachment. The, the language gets really, really yeah. granular. At, oh, I also point. forgot this pistol gets accurate, so I think I get a boost die to it whenever it's, I shoot with it. It's probably getting accurate from something. No, that's just the pistol itself gets it. The regular light blaster pistol? Yeah. Qualities Not... are accurate and stun setting. I just see oh, stun setting with what oh, I'm looking at. Oh, it's the HL-27 light blast pistol. Thank you. Sorry. These things matter. Sometimes, like, in my mind, I'm like, yeah, people know what I'm thinking or looking at. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that one does have accurate. And medium range, so you can you can totally outrange this 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 flame projector. You can yeah. kite the R one. Well, if I decided to do the uh, short and barrel, I can't. But but yeah. All right. So this is a difficulty three mechanics check that takes twelve hours. I would let you do one of these because you bought like some kit, so you can do it, and then. We can just call it 12 hours. If you'd like to try the hard mechanics check. Yeah, I just don't think I'm prepared to make that. So You can save it. Yeah, leave it as it. Yeah, you know, an accurate stun pistol is still nice. Yeah. Let's see. All right, he said he should be back here in just a minute. That's cool. The shortened barrel does lower the range to shorten. Yeah, that's why I was saying, like, yeah. We're just gonna, gonna abandon all that for all now. Right. For now. I take the shortened barrel they... for the innate quick draw. So I'm just gonna ask. Yeah. But now you're just walking with it out in your hand, so it's not necessary that quick draw at the moment. Well, that, and I, I don't think I could pass that mechanics check. Mm. At Maybe. least attachments... It just like take on and off, just like you would a like a silencer off a gun. You just uh -huh. just screw it on. Can you tell me if this is too loud? No. No, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. How about like, how are you planning on using it? Uh, like a soundboard. <laughs> okay. No, that's good. That's good. All right, it's. I'm just gonna use this blast door to make it end more quickly. Uh, nice. Yeah, adding some soundboard stuff, and I think it's gonna add because you guys don't speak binary. Yeah. You were having monitor issues. I, I was having mic issues in the beginning because I got a new mic. Uh -huh. I set it up. And then I started, like, playing with this board a little bit, and then it stopped working. Like, my computer no longer recognizes it as a microphone. Yeah, it's I, probably... yeah I've uh, had similar issues with mics. I don't, I don't know why computers hate them so much, but they sure do. I blame Discord, most of all. Uh, yeah, Discord definitely uh, makes the issue. Discord especially is, like, very finicky with new things. Super finicky. And sharing the rights to that thing with other apps at the same time. Yeah. Because I need it on Discord and OBS at the same time. I did have one session where in my main recording, I only had the players' voices and not my voice. Yeah, I've also uh, seen that before. <laughs> It's so unfortunate. That's why I, I'm so glad I have the second device just as my backup. But yeah, no, I uh, Star Wars Galaxies like they had just so many op so many opportunities to be great. Then they just uh, decided to ignore all that, and uh, like the whole like player town and like the crafting and all of that was just so fucking. And then. Uh, it was so game. good. It, it, like, there's no open world game like that right now. No, and like, yeah, that's the only game that's ever been like that. The only it, thing it that I'd took say Ultima maybe, Online and maybe leveled a tiny it up. bit has gotten close is New World. 
but yeah. I'm trying to think, New World. That's the Amazon MMO. Oh, uh, okay. I did, I did not play that. Uh, but, it's, like, not like, worth, it's, it's not worth going back to play. It was good for like a solid like six months, and then it was terrible. Duly noted. Yeah. Yeah. Some games are like that. Yeah. Um, the age shows. Yeah. I'm never going back to have a hotel, for instance. <laughs> but I just remember when Star Wars: The Old Republic came out. I was like, man. I hope it's going to be like uh, Star Wars Galaxies 2, and then I played it, and I was like, it's not. It's not. It really is not. I, I do enjoy Coder. I guess they, they got the combat right, but it just didn't, didn't scratch the same itch as Galaxies. No. Yeah, Galaxies. Like, yes, yeah, I just... Like, even for all its flaws, it was just so unique. It was like, all right, yeah, whatever, I'll get over it. Yeah, I like the ham health action mind bars. I thought I thought that was like innovative and just let people get knocked out. Yeah. That was an interesting role. <laughs> yeah. Uh this point. Let's see. I don't know, and also I kinda of feel like um and I don't know how true this is. I feel like the proficiency die I get less successes on than I get on a regular ability die. I don't know if that's true or not. But that's just how it feels. I don't. Like. I don't think that's true. It does kind of feel like that. For sure, the yellow is better than the green. I personally have more luck with boost dice than either of them. Like I'll succeed. I almost never triumph. Yeah. I don't know, I just felt like, uh, last game, man. Like, yeah, this should be a super easy roll. <laughs> Alright, you have one difficulty, and you have, uh, a proficiency, two ability, and three boosts. Oh, you had six failures somehow. <laughs> yeah, it, it does not always swing in our favor. Uh, these are hard dice to find in real life at this point. Yeah, I've definitely seen a lot of that. But there's just, I, I always have better luck rolling my own physical dice. I feel like it's like that in, like, like even in D&D, &D, I feel that way. just feel like, uh, yeah, it would just be uh, significantly easier just to... It's easier, and then somehow, you know, the dice always just land better in person. Also true. I was watching... Dimension 20? I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. Yeah. Uh, have you seen the, the high school, like the Owlbearers High campaign uh, at all? I haven't, like, I've seen, like, clips of it, but I have not, like, sat down and watched it. Gotcha. All right, so there's one specific role where the DM, Brandon Lee Mulligan, rolls a natural 20. And so he, they pull out the, the Box of Doom so they can roll in front of people with, with as much drama as possible. And they're all hyping Lou up, being like, come on, like you just all you need to do is roll a 20. Super easy. And he has advantage. So he, he rolls his first die, does it one at a time. And it's like a 17, sorry, it was, it was a 10. It was half a, half of a, a crit. Yeah. And then he rolls the crit, and it just like it feels good. They, they went wild, screaming. Just the, the fact that it, it worked, even, even though there's advantage there, it was probably the fact that he did succeed against the 20. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I've actually seen that clip. It's like the guy with like the dreads. Yeah. That's a good yeah. clip. I just I watched that episode recently. Yeah. Um I for the most part like uh one I wish uh Brennan would do more serious stuff like his like cataclysm, critical role cataclysm. He was just uh Fan fucking dick. He is my favorite D DM. Um, yeah, I just like and I like I just wish he would do more serious games. 
my only complaint about him. But it's only because he's so good that I want to see him do more serious things. Absolutely. But I'm 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 only working through one thing. I look forward to Cataclysm. I'm doing it in like the, the season one and going all the way through. I want to see it all. And yeah, his intensity. I'm sure when he's doing a more serious game than D and D in high school, I bet it just super like heartbreaking and and yet at the same time lifting. Yeah, it's uh. And I mean, like, he just, like, he paints a very, very good, like, dark, grim, like, picture for you. I'm trying to take notes from their, their editing. That's one thing. They have, they have the pure audio, where there's no music or anything on the recording. But uh-huh. some of the characters have, like, their own theme songs. Uh-huh. I was, I was trying to think if there's a way I could give... You guys, some theme songs from the license free music I have, and then I think it would be a little better one for when you're doing a great action scene to pull it in, pull it in for that video. Yeah, um, last session, uh, near running everything over, it should have been like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could, it could have been a very yakety sax moment, and especially that early in the campaign, it would have been perfect. Yeah, I now that we're talking about I, in, in my head, I'm thinking like he turns the radio on and then it's the the cantina jizz music, yeah. I, th- I think that is spot on for this. Yeah. I I always make these unlisted, but with your guys' permission, I would publish these on my YouTube channel and make them public because I'm pretty proud of this campaign. Yeah, personally, I have no issue with that. I don't think Harrison would, but I would just double check with him. Absolutely. I, I um, you couldn't tell. I take consent and things like that very seriously. Yep. So, welcome back. Do you need me to draw you in, paint you a picture? Yeah, just just if like, uh, really, just kind of what Theros did. I saw some uh, some movement over here. Just kind of what I missed. I shot. I missed. Oh, cool. Yes. Can I so, shoot yeah. Missed? <laughs> so he <laughs> he threw some rocks to draw out the R1. It projected flame at the rocks and then advanced forward to check it out. He shot and missed and then took cover, and now it's your turn. Okay. I would like to do the same. <laughs> um. at, at this range, so like you need to be where Theros is to be out of the range of the flame projector. So you might need to move, maneuver to move back a little bit. Not that it can't move forward itself. And then... It's a dif- uh, difficulty two shot. Okay, so difficulty two, and then this is a ranged heavy. There's I'll show you. So one yellow, two greens. Cool. We got it. Two success. You succeed. So that's going to be damage plus two. What's that? What's that damage? Um, damage nine. Damage 9 as a soak of 3. It takes 6 damage, which does not incapacitate it. Now it's its turn. R1s are slow-moving, oafish, bouncing droids. <laughs> it's now going to roll to hit. Because it has come into short range, it's going to be against 1 difficulty. It is not made to use this, however. How does it look like it's like physically standing after that shot? Like, does it look like it's in rough shape, or is it... it? It is in rough shape. Okay. And because you're the one who shot it, it's going to flame project. You see, like, a one success at near. Okay. So this is going to be nine damage okay, I of fire. And it's, uh, like, wound damage, right? Not strain damage? Correct. Okay, so I have four soak, so that would be five. You take five. Oof. And then we're back to the top of initiative. I rolled for your, your initiative. So okay. you can see over here. It's okay. you, one of you first. So both Nine. of you, and then it. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, and then it's a uh, one difficulty now, right? It is now one difficulty if you stay in place. Also, keep in mind there is the aim maneuver if you wanted to oh, increase your chances. I also have to add a boost to that. You would, yes, you can use that, that boost. Successes? Well, just for my accurate. Oh, well, it gave me nothing. All right, so two successes. Um, and I believe my damage to width five. would be seven, I believe. With it. Uh, you're showing me the, the base damage or with the successes? Well, with, with, with the successes. Gotcha. It's going to reduce that by three. It is still standing. Next turn. It is critically injured. Okay. Um... So it's it's one less difficulty, right? Yeah, one purple. All right. Another shot with a blaster rifle. One success, one advantage. So it'd be nine more damage. Cool. And you lay the killing blow against the R1. It explodes. It is ruined, and the flame projector is also destroyed, but at least is is now inactive. Okay, I you're just like immediately gonna like sit down against this wall and like try and like pat the flames out that are probably like on his like coat or something. Um, and he's gonna grab uh, two stim packs, and I'm actually gonna use both of them. Recover nine. I need to not die. Let's see, do I have a counter for, for stim packs? Um, um, let's see. I have it in my, like, Og Dudes thing, so I'll just do that I use two. Okay, cool. I have three. You're not burning, but I'm going to just put these burnings here. See, for my own case sake. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll find one of those those counters later. Alright, so that, that's the current situation. Deeper inside, you can see it starts to get dark, and it is a narrow pathway, which, as I said, would not fit this speeder. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to um, put on my goggles that lets me see in the dark. Nice, that will remove two setback from darkness. The scanner goggles, I believe. Uh, yes. I am going to go ahead and get up then and uh, move up kind of here towards the mouth of the cave. I'm not going to turn my like flashlight on my gun on yet. But I'll just kind of have it ready to once we move into darkness. So as it begins to become more dim, you can see that there is some additional moisture. So you, you can predict that's going to be slippier, slippery around this area, where it, it drops down at currently an unknown distance. All right, you want to go first or you want me to go first? Um... I'm a worse shot. Well, I guess I should go first because I'm a little bit sneakier. Okay. So yeah, I guess we'll slowly start advancing through. All right, go ahead, go ahead, move yourselves. I will tell you when you need to make any appropriate skill checks. And if you want to make any, you want to volunteer any, just say so. Okay. All right. <laughs> and do I need to have my uh, my flashlight on now at this point? You don't need it, but it would reduce the setback. Okay, then I will probably just go ahead and do that. Activate the flashlight on your weapon. So you can see that, and now you, you smell it also. That's probably not just water here around this area. Are we, should we be seeing something on this? Uh, uh, no, you, 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 do, you don't see anything at all. Uh, no, it's just white. It's just white? Oh, that's weird. Oh, um, real quick, actually. I'm going, before we go, like, too much further in. Yeah. Um, I'm going to double back to the cave entrance real quick and take out my macro binoc or my sporting, like, binoculars. Mm -hmm. I just kind of zoom them, like, all the way out to be in more of a normal view if I can. And just kind of try and get a recording of, um, 
Like, I'll, I'll just kind of, like, briefly do, like, an explanation of, like, what happened so, with the astromech. Can you give me the name of that item so I can con I can consider the implications here? Yeah, the it says for some sporting, reason the HTML isn't working. Sporting macro binoculars, I think. They said they had recording capability and... Um, what's it called? Uh, like, a low light. So they're not really things that you strap to your face, though. Oh, no, no. I'm not looking to use them, like, as a permanent thing. It's more just, like, recording what is happening here real quick and yeah. then, like, briefly and then moving on. And at the next stage, when appropriate, all right, so I'll do another little recording. You're going to get a low-quality recording because it is made for so far away. But you, you can at least get something. Okay, that's fine. And let me see if I can fix this HTML issue, because I see it. You can see it on my the screen I'm sharing, right? Uh, let me check. I can see the map. You can see the map. Yeah. I guess it's just for some reason. It's just you. Does that help? Or does the second one look better? Uh, yeah, I can see the second one. But you can't see the first one. Yeah, for some reason. That's weird. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that, if that happens... Just let me know. Oh, I just deleted it on accident. Sorry, one second. Rewind time. Does rewinding time fix the first one? Uh, waiting for everything to load back in. Uh, yes. So that's what we can try next time. All right. So you guys are on this map. Uh, as you get closer, you can smell it. It doesn't like because it has a smell. It's clearly not just water. Okay. And is this like a pit, or is that it... is a, that is a pit? It appears to be a fifteen foot drop in there. How the hell? I want to kind of look around and see if I can figure out how these droids are getting through. We can roll perception for me. I'm going to put that at two difficulty, and you've removed the setback from the darkness. I don't want advantage. All right. You did get an advantage. What are you doing with that? Um, I guess I'll just pass it on. All right. That's going to be the, for the next actor. And for where the map is right now, I'm going to say stuff on beneath the destiny points is going to be next use. Stuff above the destiny points is going to be in the, the long-term pool. Okay. You can't really figure it out. They, they probably either fly over or they, they make a bridge temporarily. Which is not a plot hole. They can, they, there's a way for them to do it. Yeah, sure. Um, okay. Uh, does there look to be like a way to like go across like any handhold or anything like that we might be able to cross? Absolutely. It definitely seems like something you can either try to jump over or try to climb over. Which one would be easier? That would depend on the gear you have. I'm actually going to give them as the same difficulty, which would be three difficulty with one setback. It's a decent jump, and you'd, you'd want to get a running jump for that. All right. Um, something tells me we're just going to have to climb down in there, walk over, and then climb back up. Yeah, you can take the slow route. That would be in athletics against two difficulty. All right. Yep, I guess, you know, that's just what it's going to be. But sorry, uh, two difficulty with one, one, one setback, because it is still slippery from whatever the substance is. Okay. And my athletics is trash! Man, right. I've been muted this whole time. Jeez. Oh. I thought you were just being patient and sharing the stage. <laughs> I have not been sharing anything useful, I can say. Oh, come on! <laughs> so. I don't want advantages! All right. And you just uh, did said you pick athletics, the... right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. All oh, right. Man. So one okay. failure, two advantage. <laughs> So now you guys are stuck in the pit. Sweet. You can. Uh, what are you doing with those advantages, each of you? You got two advantage. Uh, 
Can I just store a uh, boost? I will also do that. And then, um... <sighs> speaking of boosts, can I give him a boost up? Yes. That would be used the higher of either of your guys' brawn, and uh, the higher of either your guys' athletic skill. And you get it to use two boosts. One from helping each other, and the other one because it has to be used in the pool. Okay. Um... I've got... One yellow, one green for athletics. Okay, then I'm going to let you you roll. You want me to boost you? <laughs> yeah. Okay. And still a neither setback, you have, right? Neither of you have run three? No. No. All right, so yeah, it, it is one, as you said, and still one setback, plus two boosts. Jeez. I don't want successes. I just want... <laughs> All right. So I'm going to give that as a strain to... The the one who was climbing. Okay, that'd be me. And you guys are still stuck, and you've been making some noise down here in addition to not making progress. Okay. <laughs> this is not where we want to get involved. Fuck it. All right, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna try pushing him up now. I don't even. Just, uh, two boosts. Are you using these two boosts? Well, that uh, this I... th th this one should now be one boost from helping each other. Okay. Because the, um, the other boost was had to be used in the pool. Okay, then I'll just keep it, I guess. You could also use one of our destiny things. That is true. Actually, no, yeah. So how about you, you, you try, that, you try that again? You use our destiny point. This way you have two proficiency and a boost. Okay. Yeah. I'll right. flip that point for you. So two proficiency and a boost against a setback and two difficulty, right? Yeah. Are you using any of these boosts in the pool? I would say not yet. For you um, that point. Unless you want to just use the... I was going to use one of them. Okay. Use one. Because we, like I said, we need to... Alright, here, I already put it in there, I think. Or wait, is this boost you said from helping yeah. each other? Yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. All right. I did not. Oh my god! I don't. Just give me successes. <laughs> we're doing great. All right. Uh, we were talking about how the dice are are not always favorable. Yeah. Sometimes yeah, they're just I'm, mean. Well, I am at this point. I think going to just kind of like. I. Shit, I don't know what to do. Like, we're just stuck in All this right. bitch. Just roll it again, and I'll. Do you want me to take a strain for that or no strain? Why don't, why don't you roll it? Because I'm obviously not having a good time over here. Oh, that was a. That had an advantage on it, so I figured we were just putting that as a boost to the next person. You didn't gain any strain from doing it. Okay, sweet. Because that... That, was, that was zero successes. Okay. Oh my fucking god! Did you take the boost that you had to use? Yes. Yeah, so, what do you want to do with that two advantage? I'm gonna, I'm gonna reduce my strain by one. All right. I'm going to flip a destiny point, and you guys are found as you're struggling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. We deserve that. <laughs> You can hear it as it approaches. It appears to be another R3 model. However, this time, it is holding an E11 blaster rifle. Okay. I guess to this point where you, you can see it and it can see you. And it, it beeps and bops a little bit. And it, uh, it aims at you. And you don't quite understand what it's saying. But something like... Um. <laughs> How do you respond? I'm just gonna shrug, like just kind of like two hands up, like shrug. It walks away, same. and then it returns with manacles. It throws two manacles down into the pit with you guys. Okay. Okay. 
Can I pick up the manacles and make it seem like I put them on? I'll put that as a skullduggery against its perception, which is two difficulty. Okay. Uh, let's see here. My skullduggery is this. All right. Yeah! You do succeed, uh, but your character is a little little anxious about what's going on with this, so I'm going to create a setback die into the pool. Okay. And for the other roll? You, you're both trying that, right? Oh, uh, yeah, one second. Sorry. Skull Tucker, you're not my... Unless... Uh, you know, you just want to put it and get taken away. So, it's just two, two or different, right? could I yes. assist him? I, I don't, I, can you think of a way to assist him? I mean, maybe he's, like, struggling to put them on, so I, like, walk over and, like, try to help him with my already manacled hands. Like, I don't know what these manacles like so it's hard for me to know if that is possible. I'm gonna just there, do my best here. They're okay. rigid manacles with it with that bar in the middle and the two clamps on the side. Okay. So it's not something that you kinda actually really need help with. He can he can put it on one wrist and then slam the wrists together. Okay. okay. Two the, one three. Would you rather than giving you the one strain immediately, I'm going to have the R three fire at your feet. Okay, I'll put them on. <laughs> Let me just get this rolled. Huh. And I think... And my... you're going to take uh, one strain from it, because it, it does absolutely miss you when it's firing. Oh, one strain. Okay. And my food just got here. I'll still be able to hear you guys. I'll be back. Cool. So Nier is now manacled. Theros appears to be manacled, and then it lowers a synthrope down with a hook on it. So you can like put the manacles on there. Okay. And then it walks away, and you can hear what sounds like a swoop bike, and it slowly pulls you up. You get hoisted up. Okay. I guess he's operating blind because he had to stow his flashlight, but you could still have your scanner goggles on. Yeah. Um, and is the droid back yet? Yeah, never mind, don't worry about it. It's uh, so the, the droid is kind of back yet. It's in this area, it's actually on a swoop bike. Uh, like, you didn't see it, but you, you felt the pull after you hooked yourself on to the synthrope. Okay. Um, okay, I'm back. For... Back. For taking off his manacles, I don't know if any of my tools would work for that. Um, I don't know if you needed like a lock pit, lock pick it set. Would, it would, it would, it would depend on how you wanted to do it. You don't specifically need. I feel like you could put together using your slicing kit for this. Okay. Because they do have a a small computer aspect to them. Okay. And the the R three, like I said, it is here. It's just ahead of you, and it pulled you up with the swoop. Okay. And can it see me? Yes, you can assume that. Okay. Is there any way for me to like swivel around so it can't see me, or is it going to basically see me no matter where I'm at? It looks like it, it's keeping an eye on you guys, at least at this point. Okay. And is there like a difficulty check that I can make? In order to just break out myself, or like, there is not, it, uh, like you're just wondering if that's possible. I'm not necessarily trying to do that at the moment, but just making sure that's something I could attempt later. Definitely is. Let me check out the the rules for the restraints. Binders. That's what they're called. 
It is a difficulty four athletics or coordination check. Okay. But it is technically possible. And is it like a mechanical latch, or is it like... Uh, I'm describing it as a straight rod with two clamps on the sides. So when you, you, could, when you uh, put your wrist inside the clamp, it is kind of a mechanical thing where it, it, you push it and then it clamps onto you. Okay. I was just... I was wondering if... If I was able to just, like, focus on it, if I would be able to use a move to, like, undo the latch, like a force move. Like the, you can't the see mechanic. the latch. Oh, the, the, you have to be able to see it. Yeah. At least with, right. with your level of force powers, yeah, you need to be able to see it. You could, in theory, use move if you had the key and try to, like, slowly work it in there. But Okay. Fair enough. So yeah, it, it pulls you out, and it it beeps approvingly, and then starts to advance into the cave where it starts to open up. Okay. It goes just a little, li just a little bit out of your view, and then like pokes back and like okay. gestures for you guys to follow it. Okay. Is it looking at us while it's driving forward? It's hard to say because it's it's a rotating head, so it's like its its body is facing forward, but it swivels back and forth. Frequently. Okay, 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 okay. Then I'm just going to deal with it. Yep, keep going forward. And here in this open air, you see other swoop bikes. We I mean, just had to move a little bit to put it here. And it drops the bike off over there. Continuing on to the next part of the cave. Um, there we go. Again, it narrows. I started this a little bit too far forward. So it's going to get weird in a moment. I'm just going to put this on top of there. And then it forks after yeah. it narrows again. Okay. It goes left. The left and straight way. I remember last time we heard that right, right was the stash and left was the... Basically. If that's what I said, because I, I got some of my, my directions mixed up. We actually go the other direction. We go right to the stash. I think I said oh, left. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll make that as continuous as possible. And in the other direction, you do hear what sounds like machinery, drilling, um, machinery work, like something is being constructed right now. Okay. There's some rubble here. You passed a, a, a gonk droid on your way. And then you see what appears to be an R2 droid working on another R3, attaching the limbs that the current R3 that you're looking at has. Okay. Attaching no, the, the so case. Are we heading towards the stash room? You are headed towards... Yeah, sorry, we were going right and I, I got mixed up. That's no, fine, I'm just, I'm just making sure. It is the stash room. Which is like this. And so, the KT unit... That's R1. Where'd the arrows go? Oh, I already moved them. Okay. Yes, this stash. Here, there appears to be a majority of parts. And actually, like, some stacks of credits. Just in the crevices here. Okay. Then, as it pulls out an additional two manacles, um, I'm going to say, uh, uh, "Can I leave, can I get my? Tra I'm sorry, I don't understand you. Can I get my translator out?" It doesn't seem to respond to you directly, it just points into the, the back corners. And I'm just going to start um, taking, I'm going to see if I can't like reach around and like start, I know I have that bar, so it's just whatever might be possible. And I'm going to start like putting my hand in my backpack. And, and while he's, 
while he's doing that, I'm gonna be I'm gonna kind of take a step towards the droid and just be like, "We don't understand you," and like try and get its attention on me. All right, if you're trying to distract him from it, you um, we can have that go down. Are you trying to pull out something specific? Uh, yeah, I'm getting into my secret compartment for my lightsaber. Let's put that as a deception against one purple. Okay. My deception, I think, is decent. Deception, yeah, it's decent. And I'm going to use a boost. Three successes. So your your ally gets the attention of the R three, and you are able to access your secret compartment. Okay. It doesn't seem to notice very much, and rather than pointing with its finger, it grabs the the rifle, shakes it at both of you, and then points incessantly into the corner. Okay. Um. I'll be like, all right, fine, fine. I'll kind of just like walk towards the corner. And was it was it this corner or this corner? It doesn't seem to have a preference for which corner you're going into. Okay, I'll start going this way. Um, it's, it's pointing at Theros. You are, you don't, you don't have a translator, right? Nope. I'm going to um force move it over here, or at least attempt to. Try to move the R three. Yes, and I'm sorry, is the R3... I forget if R3 was a bigger silhouette than the other The ones. R3 is a bigger silhouette, silhouette because of the legs. Okay, so I don't know if I... I don't think I can move it then. I don't think you can. Okay. Um... Hmm. Then, uh... I'm gonna start... I'm gonna start sabering. R Real quick, can I yep. use? Am I able to activate my like earpiece comm link? I think so. I kind of assume like you 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 have it in at all times, and before you got into the cave, you probably turned it on. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, I'm just gonna be like, be like, be chill, be chill. Like just gonna okay. like. So as I am about to turn around and strike, he says that. So I just kind of um, put the saber in my sleeve, and then kind of just walk over here. It produces the binders again, and it starts to bind your legs. Do you respond in any way? Oh, never mind. Uh, yeah, I'm on a saber. <laughs> All right. It's in engage range with you. It's going to be difficulty two. And I'm going to say that it's definitely caught off guard. So you can roll this. You know, if you get like a really good roll, it might end it. Otherwise, we're going to roll initiative right afterwards. Uh, three successes, two threats. Two threats. I'm going to turn that th those threats into two strain for you. Okay. Your train lightsaber is base uh, damage six, I believe. Uh, I believe you are correct. And so it will take six strain, which does not incapacitate it. And now we're going to roll initiative. Because of the nature of this, it's going to be cool. I'm going to give each of you um, you know, not each of you. I'm I, I, I not gonna make it weird. Yeah, I'm saving this setback still. Rolling for initiative. I got two successes. And there's no difficulty on initiative, right? No. Correct. And then once you have rolled your initiative, please put yourself into your initiative slot. Move. Well, for some reason, it just does not want me to move that. It looks like your base maybe got caught under the board. Okay, whatever. I'm, 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 I'm right here. I'm one above where it says I'm at. I might have to reconnect the base on that. It's fine. All right, initiative's all clear. Mm-hmm.
So, you guys are both going to be going first because you've got more successes. Who is first most? Uh, I just swing. He knew I was going to swing, so I'll let him uh, go first. Um, I'd let you go if you want to. Uh, He's bound, so like you might. You know. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna swing again. Here, I will give you that one setback. Okay. I am getting up off my feet. Probably has a shackle on me, and it's too difficulty. It is too difficulty. Okay. We also have two. One failure, two advantages. What we want to do with those advantages. I'm gonna go ahead. Ah, never mind. I don't have that much strain right now. Um, I'm gonna give give a boost to to near. All right, it's about to happen. Just remember, you have a boost now. What are you doing, near? Okay. Um. Oh, and then uh, just as a maneuver, I am going to uh, attempt to get behind the droid. No problem. So, am I able to quick draw with my hands bound? I'm going to say you can quick draw, but you're going to be at a, a disadvantage from, from this. I'll give you a step back to, to use it. Okay. Um, well, actually, I'm not going to move any, so I'm just going to... I'm just going to use my maneuver to like draw the pistol that's on my um, on my hip. All right, because you have quick draw, it is an incidental, but because uh, you're kind of bound. Well, I was saying just like taking my time with it rather than utilizing quick draw to like. Right. I mean, it's up to you. I just that was my intent at least. Um, it's drawn. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to try and blast it with. Um, so it's going to be with two setting? step back. Yeah. Something's fine. Uh, it's, One it's very close range, which is actually worse than being from short range. So it says here, if you're doing a range versus melee, it is going to be three difficulty because it's too close. But why don't you just try to break out of your, your cuffs? <laughs> well, I already drew the pistol. Oh, well, yeah. So I've already you committed. Know, if you've committed... So that's going to be three difficulty. Uh, you get one boost from your friend, and it's also two setback. Yeah, this is probably not going to go great, but we'll give it. A you shot. only have two ability with your gun. With a, you with range light, yeah. Oh, with range light, okay. Your uh, okay. your your, your yeah. hands are are shaking. You you can't even hold the gun properly because your hands are so far apart, and you just don't make the shot. Okay. All right, the, the R3 is going to drop the manacles in one of its hands, and then it's going to maneuver back behind you. I'm putting it a little further in this direction, just to show that it's getting too short range. And then it's going to shoot at Theros okay. with the E11. So now this is difficulty 1 because you're in short range. And it fails. It doesn't have any allies, so it can't use that advantage for anything. Back to the top of initiative. All right. Um, do go ahead, move over. And we can we can get onto this other map now. Okay. And I just kind of like, God, how do you? There we go. Um, I kind of hey. just uh, attempt to move here and just totally. Try to keep blocking it. And then I'm going to swing again. Take your swing. Two difficulty. Jeez. You get an advantage. Where are you spending that one? Uh, I'll give it near. Near is going to get a boost. You, you put it off balance. Near, it's your turn. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to try and break out of the cuffs now, I think. All right. Athletics or coordination, difficulty four, plus a boost. Difficulty. 
four. It's a boost. Um, what do you think is better, three greens or a yellow and a green? I personally think that uh, yellow is worth like one point five greens. So that would be like two point five versus three. Three greens probably slightly more likely to succeed. Okay. And then can I use a destiny point to upgrade one of those greens to a yellow? Yes, you can. Okay. All right, let's see what happens. More dice is usually better than better dice. One failure, one advantage. Um, so yeah, I'll just give that boost to... Give that boost right back. There's... And you, yeah, you, you do not succeed in getting out, but seeing you struggle has heartened your ally. All right, the, the R3 is going to the turn to near. It's going to set the stun. Like, and you can see through your sky goggles, it takes it off of stun to kill. And it's going to try to intimidate you. Do you accept this intimidation? Like, I'm not going to roll forward. Like, do you, do you understand that it's going to try to kill your ally if you continue to press? Um... I just have to uh, accept that uh, Nier can get out of that situation. All right, I'm going to roll for it. Roll to shoot. It succeeds. Then put the 11. It's going to be 11 damage. 11 wounds to Nier. Okay, I got four soak, so seven. seven. Oof. All right. Okay. And then it's going to uh, use its maneuver to aim at him. So the next round, it's going to have a boost when it shoots. It. It's like ignoring Theros in an effort to make true on its threat. Top of initiative. Okay. Going to step in front of it. Blaster to me chest, uh, and I'm going to. Swing again. Add my boost. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> you can try to re-roll it if you want to flip a destiny point, or you can still hold on to the destiny point. What do you think, Harrison? Um, I'd re-roll it. Okay. Flipping. Two there you successes, go. four advantages. Didn't what are you using those advantage for? No. You can use two advantage to crit, because the, the crit rating on a lightsaber is two. I don't know if it is for a training. I don't know if the training saber even has a crit. Um, let's check that out. I think Not most that I things... I don't want to take it, but you know. Yeah. The first crit of the game... You're right, it does have a, a non-applicable crit, so you cannot crit with the training saber. Oh. Ah. Okay. Good call. So that's going to be eight points of stunning damage, which will deactivate it. Okay. You're uh, out of initiative. You know that blaster fire was echoing through this chamber, so you know it's only a matter of time before the rest of the gang comes to check out what's going on. Okay. Um, I'm going to go try to get the manacles off of Nier. All right. And would that be Skullduggery? I think it would be Skullduggery. This is going to be against difficulty 2. I'm just going to like walk up to him with the like blaster hole in my arm and just be like, Ow! <laughs> <laughs> I want to remove a strain from myself. And uh, yeah, so it's open now. So you're, It is open, yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you managed to pop them open. And, and it does take a couple of minutes. You have two more advantage. I assume you're going to put that as a boost to the pool. Uh, yes. Um, I am going to go ahead and use another stim pack. I think that's for the best. Because I don't want to die. Very fair. That's three, right? That would be three now. Okay, so I have two left. Three. 
So you can hear the droids approaching. Oh, do we get to roll, just since the encounter is over, do we get to roll discipline to see if we can heal any? We can, yeah, we can say that you guys are, take a moment to catch your breath. So you want to roll cool or discipline? It's for me, I believe. My to recover strain. Okay. Three, and is there a difficulty on that? No. Three successes and an advantage. Uh, five advantages. Every okay. one, every advantage, and every success can restore strain. Okay. okay. All right, and I'm just gonna like re re grab my blaster rifle. Um. Yeah. If we're hearing mm -hmm. these guys coming up, I think we would probably want to take, you know, some defensive stances yeah, for sure. I would get farther back than that. You have a long range. You've got a little time to decide where you are. It, it can change. You could. Yeah. Your call. Uh, to reinforce your positions, I can have you guys roll stealth against two difficulty. Right. So get. Efficiency, ability, yes. uh, zero success, but two advantage. What would you like to spend those advantage on? Um, can I just add them to our pool? And you then I got two successes and a threat. So let's have you take a strain, okay. and so you you will get greater cover, and then near will get uh, just the regular cover from this, his his positioning. Nier cannot see what's going on unless he wants to turn his flashlight up and give up where he is. Uh, not yet. Right. So, no, you only hear this. Audio. But Theros can see an astromech poking its extensions and does, uh, clearly does not have a flame projector. Go forward, and then as it comes upon its ally, then Three more R3, four, and fives come around. The R3 seems like it's been partially modified. It has one arm on it holding a, a blaster pistol. I am actually going to change my gun setting to stun. And they move forward. And then far back, you can see a shiny R2 that appears to be speaking in binary to command these guys. Hmm. I'm going to switch my rifle to stun as well. Um. So you guys, as players, you were not necessarily supposed to know this. In this instance, the R3 was an actual person. The four non-R2s are minions, so one shot, one kill. The R2 is an adversary, so it's going to be uh, much tougher than anything else you fought so far. Okay. Um, 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 um. And about what's the range on this right now? We can say that is short uh, from Theros. It's the edge of short getting into okay. the medium. For near, it's regular short. So, like, no okay. changes because you still consider it short but close. Okay. Uh, I'm debating on whether I want to try to force move the astromech closer to it, the R2. But... The R2 is probably on that that medium range. Okay. Okay. I don't think my force move was like that, so that's fine. Um, do they seem to be trying to wake up the R3? The R1 does. The other ones are getting into basically a scouting position. Um, I... Can I see Theros? Or is it too dark for that? Uh, it's too dark. This is like okay. you're deep inside of a cave. Okay. Um, I'm just going to like whip her our... into my comm link and be like, I can't see shit. It's your call. <laughs> like, we have three, uh, three smaller and an R1. They're trying to wake up the R3. 
Oh. Well, gotta do what you gotta do, and then I'm gonna step out, and I'm going to try to stun this R3. Yes, R3. The R3 is the one with the blaster pistol. Yeah. Try to stun the R3. And I it's going to be difficulty two. Fight. Uh, well, I don't I think, think you can necessarily see me step out and shoot. I'm going to let near roll, uh, but it's going to be with three setback rather than two, just to be like like you're firing totally blindly into the darkness. Okay. Well, I would definitely want to turn on my flashlight like right as we engaged, but uh, I understand for this first shot, that's probably not. Uh, do I get a boost for being hidden, or no? No, the boost is, is to your defense. Okay, okay, okay. Making sure. All right. And I'd like to use one of our stored boosts. Uh, can I... Um... I'm sorry, is this a two difficulty or a one? If they're in short. Oh, yeah, they're in short. Should be, it should be one difficulty for you. Okay. Okay. Does that pool look right to you? Three setbacks for the darkness. Three setbacks, one... Back, for the Range. That looks perfect. Okay. All right. So, got a success. Are you and nice? Two advantage. Two advantage. Oh, one success, two advantage. Oh, hey. And I, I and would personally probably be aiming at this R four just because it was like be like the first one that I would see. I will let you spend those two advantage in selecting who you want to shoot. So you, you, you do shoot the R four. Okay. Uh, bore both of these uh, damage five, damage six. What, what's the? I think mine's. Nine. Yeah, his is... Yeah, mine's damage nine. Gotcha. So so that's ten total. And then for Theros, that was the six? Yeah. Five. Five, so which becomes six afterwards. And so it's a strong, stunning strike on the R4. I would call... I would say that it's, it's frazzled, while yeah. the R3 appears to merely be a little bit shocked. And I'm going to say now we need to roll initiative. You guys have been waiting for this, so it's going to be vigilance. Okay. And then I think my I think our armor gives us something on vigilance, it right? It gives us advantage. Or, yeah, it gives us a boost. Uh, not, no, an advantage, sorry. It gives us an automatic advantage. Auto advantage. Rolling for my guy. Yeah. Oh, wait. No. Billy. All right, sweet. Four successes and two advantages for me. Nice. Go ahead and put yourself on. I cannot. Oh, you can't. Right. Four and one. I'm stuck at the table. We can just use this. Oh, no. All right, now I'm going to roll for my three extra guys. Four. Three. These are just two so, greens. One and two. And then, um, okay, so since they're... So, since they're minions and you said they're one shot, is that only for wounds? Uh, it is for wounds or stun. Oh, then shouldn't they be down? Uh, those two should be done. Thank you for keeping me honest on that. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. All right. So the R4 and the R3 have been taken down, leaving the R5, which I'm going to put as the 1 and 2. Which is what you got. So, 1, oh. 1 and 2. So, first up is going to be the R2 droid. It's going to beep and co give some commands. Two failures and four advantages. Uh, it can't properly command these R's to proceed. Next up is either of you. I'll let you go first. Okay. Then I'll take a shot at the closest, the R5, I guess. 
Yes. And then You're... I have my flashlight on. I don't have the setbacks, right? Correct, because it is within short range. Four successes and a triumph. Nice. Because it is just a regular R, it is defeated. Maybe you want to do something besides a critical hit with that triumph. Yeah, let me you have a list over here, right? Yeah. Wait. You can upgrade your allies next check or do something vital. I'm not sure what I could do vital here, so I'm going to just uh, upgrade Theros. And Theros is next. Okay. I'll go ahead and attempt to blaster the R1. So does that Still mean one that difficulty? Oh, sorry, what? Of, does that mean it turns one of his to a yellow? Yeah, it turns a green to a yellow. Okay. Sweet, so I'm going to get away. That. Well, as that. Well, I miss. You miss? The R1 is going to attach a, a repair patch to the R3, restoring five stray into it. And I'm going to just roll for its initiative. One advantage. Which means it actually gets to go next. And the R3 is going to use one maneuver to pick back up the E11, and is going to use an action to get cover. Back to the top. The R1 is going to operate first. It's going to maneuver forward, and it's going to try to repair one of these R5s. Sorry, not the R5, the R3. Which roll mechanics for it. I'm going to upgrade that using a dark destiny point. One success, two threats, and a triumph. I'm going to flip this R3 back up. And as a triumph, I'm going to have it roll initiative immediately. One and one. Alright, Theros or Nier. Up to you, which one of you wants to go first? Um, once again, I'm going to let Nier go. Okay, I'll, um... I guess I'll take a shot at the, uh... It's the R3, I guess. Not the R1 that's repairing things? Well, it kind of seems like they can all repair things, but, uh... They are astromech droids. Yeah, fair. Do success. Do success. All right. So you talk. You take out the R three. <laughs> but with proper damage. Oh, you're doing wound, not stun. Or is it stun? Um, I was still on stun. No, oh, my bad. So, do you, you, you stun like each back time? Into submission. Which uh, no, because it's a it's a maneuver to switch. So. Oh, okay. All right, and then I'm gonna take a shot at the R one. One success, one advantage. So that's six strain to the R1. And I don't know if he's a minion or not. Uh, the R3, those guys are all minions. Okay, so the R1 is out as well. And That's then right. I will give my advantage to Nier. That's a boost. Yep. So that's now it's my turn. The R2 is going to maneuver just a little bit. It's going to try to com uh, repair the R3.
This R3 is feeling significantly better. And then, because it operated at the very beginning, back to the top. It's weird, but the R2 is going to go again. At the, at the end and at the beginning of the next one. Okay. It's, go it's going to maneuver forward. And it's basically going to try to take that blaster pistol with its appendage. So I'm going to roll a difficult check for it. It does manage to take the blaster pistol, but it it breaks it in its electric arc holder. Oh no. And then it's bolts either of you guys. Alright, I'm taking a shot at the R2. This is going to be upgraded twice because it is an adversary. It's a nemesis even. A nemesis. So two red. Or and no difficulty, or yeah, uh, yeah, just just two challenge dice. Okay, do you have any boosts or anything? Uh, no, yeah, you do because I I gave you the boost for my last one, so you have one boost. Yes, yeah. oh, that was okay. a direct boost. All right. Three successes and one despair. Oh. You've been firing for a little bit. I'm going to say you, you, you run out of ammunition. Okay. Do I still get you, the shot off? You do still hit it. Or? Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's so nine. That's nine plus three, 12, minus its soak. It's a really good shot. You, you lay into the astromech, and it's just sparks flying off as you kind of shock its systems. So, real quick, um, questions on all that, then. So, mm -hmm. you said I did 12 damage. What, there was 3 plus, or it was the damage from the weapon, which was 9, and then where did the other 3 come from? Your Every successes. success as the damage. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that. Alright, cool. Okay, and so now I'm out of ammo, and I need to take like an action to reload, or a maneuver, or... It's probably going to be a maneuver to take the clip out, and another maneuver to get it into position. Okay. All right. All right. Fair enough then. I'm, I'm content with that. I will Machine. go ahead and and I'm sorry. You said it's two challenge. It is two challenge. Yes. Okay. All right. One success, two threats. You succeed, so that's six damage. Yep. You, you guys can tell that it's basically redlined. Those two threats, please take two strain as you're you're stuck in the corner and you kind of like bonk yourself a little bit. Okay. Now it's going to be the R3. They're going to maneuver back around. They're going to strain themselves for an additional maneuver. So you get here. It's going to fire at near, the closer of you. You've got cover, so I'm going to give it one setback. Three successes, two threats. I'm going to give it two additional strain. Put that right here. And that E11, it's going to do 12 damage. After your soak, that comes to eight, right? Um. Yes. So that is my wound threshold. Then back to the top. The R2 is going to command the R3. Man, the R3 doesn't even care that we're using stunning rounds anymore? That's fucked up. <laughs> no, it's, it's still set to kill. Yeah. I'm going to flip a dark side to upgrade its command. Okay. Zero successes and one advantage. That advantage does it no good except it's going to heal one of those strain that you've been dealing to it. Okay. And then it's staying in place. 
we're at the top of initiative with you guys again. Okay. So if my wound threshold is 12 and I have 12 wounds, am I oh, no. down or do I have to exceed it? You, once you hit your threshold, you're, you are essentially at zero hit points. Okay. So you're, you are incapacitated. There are not dying rolls because this is not a weapon that's going to make you bleed. Okay. Okay. Um... You could stim pack him again. Let's see here. Um... So I just, I just double checked it. Your wound threshold is 10. You go unconscious at 11. You need to exceed your wound threshold. Sorry about that. I got the rounding wrong. Okay, so I am still up. Yes. Just barely, but I'm still up. Um, okay, well, I'll let you do your thing then. Okay. Might be lightsaber in time. But, oh, wait. So, no, we'd still have to... Well, I'll definitely uh, try to get some cover. No, I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to show Um, sorry, I'm just trying to think. I understand. It's a uh, desperate streets kind of moment. Yeah, there's not really a lot of point in using another stim pack. Um, okay, yeah, I think I'd like to just basically use my maneuver to drop my blaster rifle. I'm just going to leave it there. I'm just not care. I'm going to use my quick... It's incidental to just drop? Okay, yeah. I was going to use my incidental to quick draw my lightsaber. And make an attack. It's going to be against two purple. Okay. Two purple. So right there, quick draw has now paid for itself. Two successes. So it's going to be eight strain minus its silk. It still stands. You can tell that it's probably about halfway through its system shock. Theros's turn. Okay. Um, I shall also run up and swing with my lightsaber. Two difficulty. Oh, God, sorry. You can ignore that. <laughs> put challenge on there. Fuck. A failure and an advantage. Strangely, actually a better roll for you than the previous one. Yeah. What are you using that advantage for? Um... Give a boost to near. Oop, there it is. <clears throat> All right, now it's the R 2s uh, job. It's going to move forward, and it's going to try to use its electric arc as a cattle prod on near, just because it happens to be on that side. To difficulty, did you add any defense to your armor or anything like that? Um, no. Rolling. No, it just it does it gives me additional soak against strain. It does not succeed, but by getting you off balance, it is going to give you, be giving a boost to R three, and then the R three unit is going to go. It's staying in position. And it's going to, they're going to keep focus firing onto near. Okay. Because it's in melee, it's going to be three difficulty. Is it shooting it, me again, or is it like. It, it is shooting you me. again. Okay. That's going to be 10 damage and one threat. I didn't put the boost in, I'm just going to get rid of the boost. That's 10 damage. You die when you reach double your strain threshold plus one. Okay. So, 24. So, plus... Okay, so now I'm incapacitated. 
now you're unconscious. Which is going to get rid of that boost. And now it is Theros' turn. Right. I'm going to swing at that droid once again. Oh, that's not what I want to do. You do have two light side destiny points. Yep. Three successes and one advantage. That is going to incapacitate it. Okay. You can recover strain. Yeah, I guess. And I'll that's recover, really it. I'll recover one strain, I guess. All right. Um, can I do anything with my maneuver? No. All right. So far, you've seen that the the R two is using an electric arc. Okay. Clear ability proficiency. Uh, two difficulty. Uh, I do have uh one melee defense. I'll throw that setback in there. I'm at one failure and one advantage. I'll just add the set setback in there. Uh, one failure, two failures, so it it fails harder. <laughs> it can only spend that advantage on healing its strain. Okay. Now we're gonna go back and forth. It's a slugfest between Theros and an R2. Okay. I'm gonna put my two challenge on there. Oh god, I died. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Uh, nothing. I miss. <laughs> nothing. Alright. It's going to do what it did last time. But this time I'm going to spend a dark side destiny point to upgrade it once. Okay. Two difficulty. All right, it's All your right. turn. Are we able to use a destiny point to like wake me up or anything? Like, I don't know what the. Yeah. I don't know. What the, like, I think there's a way to spend use. all the destiny points in the pool to save you. Like, if you did reach that double, and then your character oh, okay. just wouldn't die. Okay. Okay. Um. All right. Well, I uh, heal my strain. Or can I? Since it's two advantages, can two advantages make the boost for later? Yes, that, that that two advantages can give even yourself a boost. Okay, then that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Get that boost. Put it right next to you. And now it's going to roll again. Yeah, you know episode three when Anakin and Obi-Wan are fighting? Just imagine one of them instead was an <laughs> R2 unit. <laughs> God damn! No, it's, it, <laughs> it's slowly getting that, that strain back. It, it, it is boldened. However, this time, it is going to maneuver backwards. Okay. It's I'm your turn. Maneuver forward. And I'm gonna... I'm gonna swing. I'm gonna swing again. Take that boost. Keep in mind, you have a boost. Two successes, two advantages, and one despair. Alright, so you do hit it with your... with your lightsaber... That means it's going to be 8 strain. Which does knock it unconscious. On the other hand, I'm going to say with that despair, you are, you're in these tight quarters, you break the emitter on your, your lightsaber handle. Okay. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it's fine. And combat's over. Okay. Um, I, um, I'm going to get some dark side points here real quick. Um, as I am walking back to help, um, near, I switch my blaster to kill, and, uh, I put one shot right through the R3 and keep walking to heal him. Very good. I'm going to make the executive decision that the R3 is not a conflict situation. It is not sentient enough to cause conflict. Okay. Unless your character, if you want, if you want to take a conflict because your character did it with hate in his heart, that like, yeah. intention matters also. Right? Yeah, take the conflict. no, his and he did that through uh, anger. So I'm gonna take that. Um, all right, and then I will attempt to help near, probably blowing through my entire stim pack. So you've seen him take a couple stim packs today already. 
you know that he's at least stable because they're they're automatically cauterized wounds. But if he's just here on his own, it's going to take a couple of days for the stim packs to run their course and for you to heal him up that way. Okay. Huh. Is there really anything I can do other than just carrying him out of here? Let me double check the the medicine checks. I got fucked up. Sure did. Yeah, because uh, because of of what you you've got here, there's not really much you can do. Okay. Um. Then what I'm going to attempt to do is I am actually going to um, the R2 unit. Mm -hmm. I am going to attempt to change its programming uh, to see me as a friendly and to basically follow my instructions. As you open it up to slice it, you do find a code cylinder that has the the name Vero Corvin on it. You didn't really catch his name, but you can assume this is the Duros pilot. Then huh. you can make a computer's check. He is an adversary. So this is going to be against two challenge and one difficulty. Okay. I'll try it. I'm, I'm implying that this is the key to the land speed route front. Yeah. Okay, so I do shove that in my pocket. All right, and where my is my computers again? I believe your slicing kit's gonna give you a boost. So just to make sure I understood you right. Boom! Oh, two successes and a triumph. The code, the code cylinder was just the key to the thing. It wasn't like something that was built into the R2 to say, like, this belonged to him, right? Yeah. Yes, to clarify, okay. to clarify that. All right, so yeah, two successes and a triumph. You do succeed in hacking into this R2's memory banks, and you've basically... You can't make it so that you're like it's it's master because you find a bunch of circuitous things inside of it where it seems to have the belief that droids are second class citizens in the galaxy, and it's trying to overthrow the masters. So if you put that in, then it would just try to attack you anyway. Okay. You put yourself as a droid. It recognizes Theros as a superior droid. Okay, and then I guess I can basically say, hey, like. We're going undercover, so we can't be attacking people. I don't know if that's possible. Yeah, you will not. You're not sure what it's going to be saying unless you use your slicing gear to like do a back route for, for what it's thinking, because you don't understand binary. Yeah, I can. I, I basically, whenever it wakes up, I'll just be like, "Hey, going undercover. Have to, you know, blend in for to see how we can, you know, yada yada yada, take over the galaxy." Yeah. Um, and, uh, I imagine that I would have left its ability to control the other droids. Um, so, I'd probably have them go ahead and start waking up the other droids if they're going to follow the R2 unit. Yeah, I guess sure. actually, uh, it... Go ahead. Uh, I assume I, you know, assuming that I also check them to make sure that that is uh, with all the successes, I'm saying that you can uh, disconnect it from the game, but you can still hear me. Uh, yeah. All right. So at least you, you, at least you can hear me. Your your tabletop simulator seems to have crashed. And so, yeah, uh -huh. the R2 wakes up first, and while it starts repairing one of these ones, you start looking into the memory banks of another one. And yeah, they they all defer to it completely. They do not have the personality that this R2 has. They're all basically droids. The R2 actually seems to have a, a degree of sentience. You said the R2 seems to have a degree of sentience? Yes. Okay. Um, when it finds out that you can't seem to understand its binary, it starts using its holographic projector to like splice together video clips. So I'm going to start talking and just imagine that it's like, you know, in that Transformers one movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's basically doing that. Um. 
uh, and then I'm going to attempt to uh, erase the memory banks or have it tell them to erase their man memory banks or anything like that. It, it, it seems to express that this doesn't match with its current directives. It, it would be cruel to wipe somebody's memory. You're asking uh, it to do something immoral. Okay. Um, I just need basically uh, the part where we used lightsabers. I just, just in case any of the meat bags catch them, they can't know about that. <laughs> It in in its binary, it, it kind of hums a little bit as, as it it ponders this, this idea, and then it, it, it flashes like it, it's asking you, Jedi? Question mark. No, but it could be believed. It works with them. It ca it can't delete the memories. It just doesn't make sense to it. But it's going to censor that part of it. So. Okay. This is like a little black box in their memories on the video now. Okay. Uh, Sensor bars. Uh, how many more droids are in this location? This is all of them. Okay. All right. So we do need to head uh, back into town to get this meat bag over here. Um, some help, uh, because you know they might suspect something if I come back alone. So it, we... it whistles affirmatively, and then the they the R's start working together to basically make a little sled to help you drag them out. <laughs> All right. So well, I'll be back here in a couple of days. Um, you know, going to pretend like. You know, we don't know what happened. Uh, we got attacked on the road, and when I come back, um, we can start talking about the next steps in the mission to overthrow the meat bags. As you get to the the mouth, I, I, I said before that there was a way they got over the pit. They do just basically put a bridge over it, and then they pull it back out from the other side into the deeper into the chasm. Okay. So you you can get near out, and then as you're leaving. Fine. I'm going to take arc the uh, RK unit with me. I'm going to see if I can do anything to save this one. It, uh, they they ask why why you don't just let them repair it here. Oh, can they repair it? Yeah, they're, they are astromech droids. They're actually really good at this. Okay. Um, then sure, why not? The damage is probably too extensive to for him to ever be the same, but... He was he's he's really just there to maybe upgrade the R2 one day anyway. Okay. All right, so uh you are now at the mouth of the cave again. As you are leaving, the R2 flashes you a gang sign and then <laughs> null, null inhibitors for life. Yep. That's the name of the gang, the null inhibitors. Okay. Love that. So the you knee. have your land speeder. We are the knee. <laughs> it's it's pronounced O I. Because no, it's like it's not not a thing. Yeah. All right. Um, Which speed are you taking? We're gonna take the X thirty four. All right. You you take your speeder. The yep. CB seven will be will be safe here for now. Yep. And uh, yeah, so it's near slumped over my back. It's gonna. You know, toss him in there. And then we're going to head back into town. And, uh, yeah, if there's a medical facility here, which I thought there was. Indeed. Kuna's clinic is right ahead. Yep. Well, that's where he's going to go. As you're you're pulling in, Silver Cole will, will call out saying, Looks like you guys had a bad run-in. Well, I mean... At least one of us is still walking. Can't say that about them. That's just his limp body. <laughs> <laughs> In a little sled. Yep. Yeah, I uh, carry him inside, and, you know, I guess we'll have to see how much damage comes to credits him getting healed. 
Yes, indeed. So you, you, you can bring him in. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. And you can meet with this human doctor. He introduces himself as Dr. Kuda. Uh, hello, Doctor. Um, my friend uh, seems to have found a couple of blaster bolts. and uh, Could you use your assistance, um, you know, patching them up? Dr. Kuda uh, doesn't laugh at all, and he says that he'll, he'll be happy to provide services. You can discuss pricing afterwards. His only Bakta tank is currently occupied with a, it seems like a, some separatist sympathizer, so it's going to have to do this the old-fashioned way. You said a separatist uh, empathizer? Yes, okay. but uh, besides, I can't say more due to the privilege and confidentiality of medicine. All right, and I do know that that's uh, what's her face's target, which I would yep. love to take, but I don't know. I wouldn't be able to get it off planet, so whatever. Um, you know that is Wright Hall's bounty. Yep. All right, I'm going to roll for him because difficulty of four. Uh. It's a three failures, but one triumph. I'm going to say that Nier doesn't heal at all, but he's conscious. Failing oh, upwards. <laughs> he's basically got you popped up with enough drugs to uh, make you awake and not feel the pain. I'm just going to look to the doctor and just be like, do you have any idea how long till that back to it's available? He's probably just going to need another day or two. And how how does that kind of mechanic work with like being in Bacta? Uh, you you notice that when you when you put a full night's rest previously, you recovered one wound. Bacta is one wound per hour instead. Okay. So I can I'm just looking at the doctor and just be like, Doc, am I able to just rest here? Until that's available. He's, he's going to nod his head. I insist you do. Okay. I'm just going to look to Theros and just be like, I think I'm going to need a minute. Probably more than that. And, uh... Kind of... Nod my head and... Boop, 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 boop. Huh? See if I can't. Oh. Are you, like, leaving, leaving, or are you just, like, poking your head out real quick? Oh, well, you said you're going to need a minute in there, so. Oh, I am. I was just, like, I'd want to talk to, like, Theros without the doctor present, if at all possible. He's got no problem giving you privacy from himself and his surgical droid. Okay. And I'll just kind of, like, gesture at my, like, pile of stuff. Over in the corner. And I'll just be like... You should... You should take... You know, anything that you need. I already did. As well as... Other things that probably shouldn't just be sitting around. Yep, that's the plan. Did you take my lightsaber? Not yet. I would uh, love, okay. to say, love to say I was smart enough to do that. Would you like to flip a destiny point to say that your character was smart enough to do that? Eh. <laughs> well, I'm telling him to do it now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll just flip a destiny point. Just, uh, That's yeah. going to guarantee that, that the, the doctor did not notice the lightsaber. Yeah. Cause yeah like okay. My character would have been smart enough to not fuck that up. You might have been so worried about your friend. Yeah. Well, you know, I go ahead and uh, whenever I give him back a lightsaber, it'll be my busted emitter one. Be like, ah, oh, must have happened to me. <laughs> You're a bastard. <laughs> I'm just but actually, I'm going to use a broken training saber to my benefit, so I'm going to hang on. But, yeah. And you go do what you feel like you need to do, but be safe. So 
So I think it would only be fair if we give Theros maybe uh, a downtime action or two while near is healing. We're uh, gonna what extrapolate kind of this. We're gonna like, actions can I take? We're gonna a montage this. So we can see your character's got forty eight hours or so before Nier can even walk again, or the back to tank is open. Okay. You can do uh, typical town stuff. Let's not have you go on any missions. You can shop, repair, craft, socialize. Let me know if you need me any reminders on the possibilities of what you could do. So, I think, now that I have this busted training lightsaber, uh, and my friend in the hospital, um, I'm actually going to try to spend the first evening at the bar, just chatting up with people there. Um, I'm going to see if Shuri uh, takes notice that my friend is no longer there. And just first night, just see if they approach me by themselves. Um, when, when, you, when you come in on the first night, Shiri is there. They don't. It takes them a while to um, mention that your friend's missing. But it's like, oh, hey, like, how, like how's it going? It's totally normal for two people to be separate after all. Yeah. Um, when they approach me, I'll be like, so uh, I'll just kind of be like, hey, and I'll walk him. They'll yeah, basically say like, hey, I need you to follow me so I can talk to you about this. And I'll probably go back to where we got ambushed that one time. And uh, once we go back there, uh, probably more or less be like, hey, so you said uh, you hunt Jedi, right? That's the plan. And uh, I've been looking around. I think I've got the sense people are saying that they there's a, some weedy little Rodian around. I think they're probably going to the, the temples. I can tell you right now, it's Rodian. I think that they were a youngling, and that's one reason they could just slip through the radar. They weren't on Coruscant when it all occurred. You know, they've got temples, training centers all over How the galaxy. How many Jedi have you killed? Give me an honest number. Give me coercion against one challenge, one difficulty. Hmm. Challenge, difficulty... Coercion. Coercion is good. Yeah. It's going to be two ability proficient. So, one success, uh, one adva two advantage, and a despair. You can put those two advantage. What would you like to spend those on? Um, I guess I'll just put a boost dice out. Boost into the pool. I'll drag that over right now. Let's put it right here. With your success, Shiri is going to admit to you that she hasn't personally killed any Jedi, but she has transported one to the, the Imperial alive. Okay. With the despair, I'm going to say that's all you get. Do you think you could kill a Jedi? They're worth more alive. Okay. How well do you see you get one alive? She flourishes her dart projectors, or her, her dart uh, wrist embraces, and says, pretty sure. <sighs> well. And I'm going to pull off my backpack, and I'm going to pull out my broken lightsaber. I know for a fact it's not the Rodian. Is it going to be a deception against two red? Because I'm going to flip a destiny point. Uh, and I can use a destiny point to reroll that, right? Was that the way that worked? 
Um, yeah, I'm sorry, I thought, I thought I said yes, you can reroll. Two successes and a threat. Alright, so you succeed in convincing Shiri that this is not your lightsaber. And she says, maybe the Rodian isn't the only Jedi hiding here. And she still doesn't give up at that, that she doesn't seem to be suspicious of you at all. But she continues, where did you get this? I got it whenever, um, whenever, uh, Nier was in. Tried what appeared to be like a youngling and then a master. And was able to shoot the lightsaber and the youngling, but Master unfortunately descended on us whenever we were scouting out the runes. She chuckles a little bit and says, Now I said I could probably take out a Jedi, but I never said anything about a Master. You're lucky I've gotten out alive. Well, I don't know. Like, I meant, like, no, like, you know, you have a master, a teacher, and an apprentice. You, so you can only take out apprentices. I don't know how any of those hokey religions work, but either way, so you say near is a one piece. Uh, luckily. Were you ruin diving without me? Where'd you run into these two? And I'm just basically gonna be like, think, uh, you already know where I was. She'll say, so you were going without me. You know, I like to check out my information before leaving somebody. Well, we it should get. It would be the first time that I went somewhere with you and ended up getting shot at. So now you can understand why I didn't want to go alone. I sure can. Now I'm offering uh, you a chance to come with us. Or for us to come with you. You know that offer stands. I guess we'll need to wait a little bit until your, your friend is back up. That we will. Alright, so we'll say that's what you did on your, your first day and night. The next day, the Chiss and her captive leave. Okay. And then there's no sign of Jex the next day either. What are you doing the second day? At this point, uh, Nier has recovered another five wounds. Uh, at this point, we could probably throw him in the back to tank, right? Correct. Uh, the, he, Dr. Kuda is interested in discussing payment at this point. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, he has a, an apartment complex here, it's not much just to have your friend hang out for a few days. Uh -huh. But to use the box, it's going to be a, a little more pricey. Okay, what are we talking? It's be about 2,000 credits. And how much is him just to lay on that bed? 20 credits a day. Okay, I think that's cheaper. <laughs> it, is, it, it is cheaper, but it is going to add days to your, your waiting time for near. And I'm not going to like roleplay those additional days, I'm going to give you additional downtime days, because be fair to this unfair to the second player, but we can just say, you guys wait, because he, he, unless you... Yeah, that's a lot of money for us right now, so we can just kind of blow through that. So let's say it's per day. He healed him the one time for that five. And now what's your wounds at? 17. So it's going to be like 17 more days. Ooh, 17. Okay, yeah, never mind. Fuck it. I guess a lot of 20. Time. It's 340 credits and 17 days or 2,000 and one more day. Okay. And uh, Nier, do you have 2,000 credits for the back to tank? I do not. I have like six, like six hundred. Okay, yeah. Then I guess that's um, just uh. You could do one thousand credits to get him to one wound below his his maximum, so that he's at least he's he's walking around. So it's not like like the full doctor recovery. 
Yeah, if we if we could do that and then run out to the the cave. You have no idea what's going on in the cave. <laughs> I mean, he's probably talking about the, he's talking about the droid cave. Oh I yeah. Know. Well, I know right. I'm alive. Yeah, so I'm a badass. I figured you probably handled it. Oh, fair. So I just like, you know, was there anything that we could recover from the cave to make up for the price or? Oh wait, couldn't you... couldn't I also give him a stim pack? I was, I was about to say, uh, Doctor Kuda does not condone the use of stim packs outside of emergencies, but you could administer them as much as you want. So it'd be twenty four hours, and then he can get five from the first stim pack. It's only twenty five credits per stim pack. Oh. And then the, there's the question of how many stim packs you want to use per day, because he's at 17 right now, and you can heal 5, 9, 12. So three days? No, uh, you, you do it well, in do three it. days, it goes space it out, or... I could do basically two days, and do two stim packs each day. So it's going to be a total of 90 credits, because you're also paying for those two days staying in the apartment. Yeah, that Much sounds like way, way better. All right, I'm just going to put that into the chat. Three days, including the day where you guys started, plus 90 credits used. And, and then how, how much would it cost me to have stayed all those nights? Also 20 credits? You're included, and in you, you can share the same room. Okay. Right, you guys can reset your wound thresholds. You can reset your strain. Okay. And then I'm sorry, J who was Jax again? Was uh, Jax, Jax was the, the little kid that um, Besru was basically paying to shout out that Besru's here. Besru's a big shot. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So I guess we head on back to the droid cave. Oh, actually, is there is there anything I can buy to understand? Look into that. Translators. Rarity three, seven hundred and fifty credits. It is a a translator. Okay. Well, I'll have to wait on that. A little short, but. I'm looking for a, a another option. Uh, yeah, they, they have, they're both 750 credits. Okay. So. It's fine. I can just talk with who I need to talk with. All right. You said it was 90 credits for me to, like, over the 30 days, right? Yeah, and that's up for you guys if you want to split it or just put it on the person who was injured. I'll take it. <laughs> All right. And then... I just put you guys right next to the speeder, and I'm going to copy near so that now you're both. I need to copy right near right here. Okay, you're back. On our on our way back in, I'm going to kind of like hang out here, though, and be like, "Are they like? I assume you filled me in, right? Or am I just going in blind behind you? Go go ahead, tell him as much as you'd like. Um, just because uh, Theros will think it's funny. Uh, I, like, I was able to stun them all, um, and I can safely say that they're no longer a threat. To, you know, but if you just they, yeah, I did said, you disable them, or did did you just leave? Like, are they back up now? You know, it it's just not going to be an issue. It's like you know we. We knocked them down. No, no one's there to fix them. Yeah, but we just stunned them. You know droids get back up if they're just, like, shocked. Yeah, I almost died here. I don't want to just, like, walk back in there again without you, like, <laughs> Thera starts me walking shit. in. The R1 beeps, recognizing there was as, a, as an ally. <laughs> and, uh... Yep, yep, yep. Like, you know... Uh, As Mir back. comes into sight, the R one they use like the the alert sound and like advances forward and puts like, the flame projector out. 
And then I'm like, no, 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 this meat bag. He's my uh he's my cover. He uh understands what that him and all other meat bags have to be gone. <laughs> and then I'll be like uh, I do need to talk with R2, though, and then I'm going to start. Yeah, we'll just sweep these forward to over here. Okay. <laughs> you go the other way this time. I'm looking severely it, it, concerned. They produce the bridge for you to let you in. And, yeah, uh, you guys are, I'm sorry. are here now. Do we... I'm sorry, I should have asked this before. Do we actually know where the Jedi ruins are? Ruins are? You don't. Uh, she didn't tell you where they were. She said that they're somewhere in the mountains, but that's a lot of land to travel by yourselves. Okay. Um, you could probably okay. do research or something to, to hone in on yourself, but, you know, you don't have to. Okay. Um, I wonder if R2 knows. Um, so, when we get in there. Hello, R2. How, is, uh, how have things been since I've had to part? The droids all seem to be repaired. And Arthur greets you. Mm -hmm. R2, do you happen to know where the Jedi ruins are on this planet? It paces back and forth and gives uh, some audio explain people just really confused with life, not not sure. There's a particular meatbag who's going to show um, me and the friendly meatbag over here uh, to these runes, but I know he is going to betray us, because, well, you know how meatbag is. Um, once I find out where this location is, I'll probably have a meet up with us there, and this way we can ambush them. It says something in binary, and then the, the R3 <clears throat> wields its, e, its E11 and walks up behind you, basically joining your party. Oh, no, not not now. But whenever I, whenever I find the location, I will let you know. Then you can send whoever you deem necessary to assist us. This meatbag is an unknown quantity. It's saying that why not why not take R three with you for protection? And I'm gonna look at the giant hole in the side of R three's head. Um, be like, do you understand that we have to remain subtle in this uh, in this venture? I understand. And the and the the R three goes back to working on. It looks like additional parts. Well, I was fine with R3, I guess, coming with us, but the whole thing is uh, more of a, like, he just can't go, or they can't just go shooting everybody. But It, it, doesn't, it, it definitely seems like you can make the sense that you'll have a hard time controlling the R3 or interpreting its motives without the translator. Okay. Um, <laughs> other than that, let's see. Uh, R2, what was the the reason for stockpiling all of the resources you have in the stockpile. It starts with a little bit of the, the lamentations of the droid about how they're, they're second-class citizens, things like that. And Nier gets this, too, because it's using the, the video clips. Oh. It's showing droids spliced with uh, hollow, uh, holograms of slavery across the galaxy. And then it explains that basically R2 was upgrading the R3s so that then they could operate on the R2 to make it a more humanoid type uh, robot. And then they could try to create a, a safe haven for droids. They're not really, like, that. that's why their, their default was stunned. They didn't really want to hurt anybody. They just knew nobody was going to be on their side. And if people figured out that there was a droid insurrection, they'd be squashed quick. So, are your plans more to find a home or to um, 
eliminate the meat bags. It's definitely more find a home, a, a safe place where droids can be droids. Okay. But okay. meat bags cannot be trusted. Maybe one person can be, but their next generation, their children, their children's children could change their mind at any minute. Agreed. And, uh, okay. So, uh, who taught you to think this way? <clears throat> Are you just figure it out on their own? Okay. And who was your initial master? They 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 flash a, a, a big red X in the air saying no masters. No, I agree, no masters, but who was the first person who um, you were forced to be subject to? They spend the day. They're not sure. They don't know the, know the name. Let me pull up the name of the, the place where they were coming from. And while we were in the stockpile, did like we notice anything that would be of value? Uh, there was a, a large amount of credits in there. Okay. But you can probably assume that that would be stealing from the R2 at this point. Okay. Um, but the R2 explains that they had come, they woke up in Silthaven, which is one of the Oasis towns. Mm -hmm. And then pretty quickly they, they figured out that they were going to be used for cheap labor, and so they escaped. So. Uh, okay. So. I think the goal for you and the other droids is to get you off planet into a safe environment. Uh, to do so, we will need the credits, uh, or at least some credits, to um, you know, spend money to make money. So we do need a way to start working towards getting a ship to get you off planet. And there's a, a, a big glowing thumbs up. Um, so, just so you're aware, that's where me and this meatbag are going to go, go uh, get some credits, possibly a few parts, just in case I need any repairs. And... They flash some tables showing that they, they have around 3,000 credits stocked up and probably expect to need around 20,000 credits to afford a ship. And um, are, are there any, like, more expensive parts in there? Anything like that? There are a bunch of droid parts. That's really seems to be what, what they've been salvaging. Stuff like the broken astromechs, broken gunks, and the KT cooking droids. Hmm. Is there anything that I personally would know? Like, hey, if I get this, like, if I get a bunch of these, like I can sell this for a decent amount. There were the, the, the swoop bikes that were in there. Those are probably worth a couple of thousand of credits each. But even with the, the few swoop bikes that they have, the only thing you can imagine selling would be the speeder that belongs to the Duros pilot. Okay. Because it's been souped up so much, it's probably worth as much as a small starship. Yeah. But I personally I'll talk on Darren. Um, okay, so I guess we will... Uh, I guess the last question I'm just going to have. Is there any reason for you to have to leave this cave? More parts, more droid allies. I think you should... Uh, people are starting to be on the lookout for you, and I think you should lay low for a little bit. I should return and once a month to give you updates. If I find any allies out there, I'll bring them back. So I would attempt to limit. They ping and they say, like, alarm set for 30 days from now. Yeah. All right. So probably take 2,000 of those credits. 
and uh, I guess then we can get in our speeder and go. But of course, I'm gonna stop by here. Like, is there any? Is there anything else I should? I should? I should be doing? <laughs> what does Nier think of all this? Eros, I have no idea what the fuck is going on. <laughs> You, like, refuse to tell me anything, and then you just come in here and start chatting away. Yeah, like, the meatbag way of looking at things. <laughs> As I'm you depart, like... the R1 flips you guys a gang sign. Yep. <laughs> I attempt to mimic it as best I can. And then, uh... Yep. So now, one of you can take your, your, sp your, your land speeder, and the other one can take the interceptor now. And then I'll be like, okay, so here's the dilemma. Do we want to sell the speeder? Do we want to bring it back? Honestly, I'd feel kind of bad about taking it, but he's already missing it. And he's also only going to give us a thousand credits. And he almost died. I did. His recovery did cost less than that. But Man, I'm not one. sure. Like, where where could we even sell this thing? Could we like it's super recognizable? So you would basically need to go to a chop shop, probably. And I can probably find that. Like, if you go, but if you go to Mo's garage, he's gonna know that's not yours. Yeah. Or could we go like, how far of a drive is it to like, uh, what's it called, um, Cryoport? So let's clear this map up a little bit so we can look at the big map. And I think we're going to have to make that one of our last questions. Is yeah. everybody having a good time? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good. So you're about here. And like I said, it was a couple hours walk to Moe's. Maybe like yeah. half hour hover. This was still like a couple hour piloting. So to get through Cryoport... You probably want to take that couple of hours to the road, and then maybe the rest of the day to get the crowd board. Many, much of which is going to be off-road, unless you go through Mirage Springs or go along the river. And are you sure you want to do that? No, we probably shouldn't. Just saying, if a man can afford to get something like this, he can probably afford to do it again. I mean, maybe, but he also told me that he'd been working for ten years for it. He's got no oh. wife, no kids, it's just it's his only hobby is taking care of that, that speeder. Okay. Right. As tempting as it is, I think we should just return it. Okay, I'm just kind of... Maybe we can over, walk over to the speeder. Like, our speeder. I'm just gonna stop and be like, do you think we could tow some of these speeder bikes back? How much would, like, one of those speeders go for? If, you I, know, if I don't know... Me, if it's going to be 2,000 plus or minus a little bit, because they're not very fancy swoop, uh, swoop bikes. And uh, how many did we see in there? Three. Four? Three? And you, three, and you saw some, some parts deeper inside in that, that area where the droid parts and stuff like that. Okay. I don't want to take all of the droid's means of transportation. Um, I guess we can take uh, one. Whatever the most expensive looking one is. We could also just leave it for now and come back if we actually need it. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're going to leave it or take it? I guess we'd leave it for now. Yeah, let's leave it. Leave it for now. And then I'm going to fly the interceptor. You'll take the interceptor. Theros will take the X-34. Last question is, where are you going? Back to the town. So that's where we'll pick up for next session. Let me save here. That's going to be Saturday, 
the 17th of June. Everybody get 10 experience. Let's roll conflict. Conflict's a d10, right? D10 uh, minus whatever your conflict was that was for that day. Okay. You said the d10, right? Yeah. So it's going to so. be eight more morality for you. Two. And then two more for you. You guys are kind of kind of neck and neck. You actually behaved in a pretty moral way this session. And I mean, you know, I gave the R3 brain damage, but he's fine now. <laughs> it's, it's pretty good to be a droid. <laughs> get over that kind of stuff. <laughs> All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed the session. It looks like your next thing, you're, you're going to be working in Zakar to build us some more credits, and then you're going to be going to the temple with Shiri, or is there another direction I should prepare for? Um, honestly, I kind of want to just uh, research where the, um, the temples might be, and then um, at that point, I'll probably have the droid set in ambush. Yeah, I, I think the Shiri route is probably kind of where we're leaning. Yeah. All right, so it's I think also, in between... Shiri has fancy lightsaber parts. She does. In between this session and next session, you guys can probably fit maybe three downtime actions we can just talk about in the Discord, take our time, roll them out. Okay. That can be your research. If you try to, like, get a jump on Shiri, we can even do the travel, like, in that. So we can start next session in the temple if you want to, or we can start in Zakar. We can discuss all that. Okay. okay, that sounds good to me. Awesome. If you're really enjoying this game, please consider giving me a positive review on Start Playing. And otherwise, who's going to flip the table? You know what? We've all flipped the table except you. How about you flip the table? All right, I'll flip it this <laughs> time. Flipping out. Ooh, that, that was a good one. That was, that a, was good a good flip. one. <laughs> that was probably the best <laughs> flip I've seen. Ugh. <laughs> uh. All right, man. Well, take care. Thank you again. You as well. My pleasure. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I'll catch you online. <laughs>